Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's fundamental and technical supply and demand forex and gold analysis. And uh, starting off with the uh, week ahead, um, 20th of February. So this can be found as well. This analysis is on the tradingeconomics.com website. And a short summary of what is coming on the important news is in the US, the focus will be on the FOMC meeting minutes and speeches by Fed officials. Investors will also closely follow personal income spending, uh, personal income spending, PCE price index, and second estimate for Q4 GDP growth rate. So the second estimate pretty much is just uh, any kind of revisions for the uh, already uh, Q4 uh, GDP, so it's not really that important, and this is a massive uh, revision. Also, the attention will be taken uh, by fresh PMI manufacturing and services reading for major economies, including the US, UK, France, Germany, and Japan. And finally, central banks in, uh, I guess, New Zealand is what we're focusing on as, as the currency that we're going to be analyzing uh, in this video. Will or one of them will decide on the course of monetary policy, and then you can read the uh, the, the details if you scroll down. Now, getting into the uh, the technical side of things and a bit more fundamentals in the uh, in the dollar index. So the dollar's been making uh, some new highs, right? Broke past this uh, supply zone, and uh, as I always say, there's no real level of, of there's a technical level that's going to stand in a way of really fundamental analysis. What you're supposed to do is is um, understand your fundamental bias before uh, looking at a price chart, and then understand. Um, where you are in a price chart secondly and see whether you're at a cheap or an expensive area now uh, the dollar uh, seems to be appreciating and the, really the reason why is because uh, Fed officials stress the need to keep raising rates to cool prices so over the past couple of months what's really you know been going on is that the market has had one idea of what the Fed is probably going to do with monetary policy and the Fed have been basically saying that they're going to be doing something else and um, there was this bit of a divergence between whether the market was would be correct or the Fed would be correct. Now, uh, recently we've had uh, not only you know um, outstanding jobs numbers, but we've also had inflation come out. And even though it's kind of you know came out slightly lower than expected, um, or th than the previous month, it was higher than expected. And um, so the inflation um, CPI course, uh, consumer price index and core CPI um, is really kind of seen, seen as, as, as sticky. So it's not, um, it, it seems like it's, it's trending down, but it needs to kind of come down a bit more. And at the moment, um, it's being a bit stubborn. So in order to get the uh, inflation down to their 2% target, the Fed still see the need to, you know, hike a little bit more. So the Richmond Fed uh, chief favored 25 basis point increase in February, and um, Miss Governor Michelle Bowman says policy not yet uh, slowing the economy, uh, which um, hikes can and tend to do. Right, if you hike a bit too much, it can contract the economy. But at the moment, it seems like obviously um, the the Fed hikes haven't worked their way through to the economy yet, and so. Um, with that being said, I did say in uh, my private members group, Discord group, that um, on the uh, on the Thursday uh, we had a weekly call on every Wednesday, a live group call on Wednesday, um, a private members meeting, and uh, I did say after that in on the Thursday that I was uh, saying yesterday's call I can see the dollar appreciating in the short term, so over the next uh, month or so, as an extra rate hike is priced in but it seems as though the bank's consensus is for the dollar to depreciate by the end of the year and i said i can see the dollar rising to either the 106s 108s in the short term uh but as the fed ends its rate hiking cycle i think it should be, it should be the limit so barring some major risk event for either the dollar or globally um or inflation remaining sticky or rising so uh, the counter force to the dollar appreciation will be china reopening and risk on and so um, when we look at you know the 106s to 108s um, you know we've got some central bank um, uh, central bank but some uh, some um, investment bank analysis that talks about you know the 105s to potentially the 107s 108s as well um, technically probably looking at this area here but the more that the markets 
price in uh, more Fed, uh, Fed hikes is the higher the dollar should go and again in the short term. And we also have um, this viewpoint from a HSBC Bank talking about the market reassesses its view on Fed rates and that's due to rising inflation, right? So if inflation is still seen as maybe sticky or, you know, a problem, um, then the Fed have to hike more. So in, uh, you know, uh, uh, January, right, the grey line was what the market was pricing in, in terms of the um, uh, percentage of uh, um, uh, Fed uh, rates or what they would potentially be by a certain date, right? But now uh, we have from the 8th of February, um, they the market has really priced in uh, the rates to be actually a, a bit higher in the short term anyway so March May going into July we should then see a you know a drop off etc right so this is HSBC you know these are some of the smartest guys um, doing their analysis so again in the short term you're starting to see actually more rate hikes being priced in one or two more being priced in which again in the short term possibly I think if again the data supports that narrative um, should be push the dollar either to the 105s or at least at the limit the 108s but by the end of the year um, or towards the summer and into the autumn and winter months I think the, uh, the dollar should want to decline so with that being said um, I did you know say in the group that if you did want to be long on the uh, the dollar that's not a bad idea in the short term definitely not so waiting for any kind of pullbacks right into a demand zone of course you're not necessarily trading the dollar dollar index you'd be looking for a pullback um into the uh you know the dollar pair the dollar cross and then just looking at this as confluence really um and on the dollar index as a pullback and then just pull the trigger on a um on a dollar cross like the dollar yen or dollar swiss if that's what you want to trade or if prices do come back down to the 101s um, and there's really no reason for it to come down to the 101. So when I say no reason, for example, you know, the Fed is still, you know, quite hawkish in terms of their rhetoric and uh, inflation is still sticky. Then I think this is actually going to be a decent bargain to look to buy the uh, the dollar. If you are looking to sell the dollar, um, then I would say probably the highs, uh, maybe the 105 round number, 105.50s is probably where you want to start to look for any kind of um, sell trades to short the dollar but um, the dollar is going to be a bit of a tricky one for now but I think the momentum really and I don't really like using momentum but um, you know I would say the uh, I would probably lean more towards the dollar appreciating um, in the short term than I would do um, you know de devaluing in the short term overall again as long as the uh, data supports continues to support that narrative um, so moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen Given what we've just said about dollar, um, the yen, I am actually bullish on the yen, but I've taken a bit of a backseat on this trade. I do think this is a really nice technical level uh, to look for any kind of short trades, but with um, dollar potential strength, you could see obviously this reverse, but maybe not as much as um, as you might hope, depending on obviously where your entry um, is and your you know your stop losses and what your risk reward is, right? But um, I do think that if you want to do want to get long on the uh, on the dollar yen, um, this is decent. I think that the um, the Japanese yen at the moment, their new their nominated governor, new governor, um, I think his name yeah, you pronounce it Udia. Um, he's actually neutral when it comes to whether he's hawkish or dovish on policy, and so um, I think as uh, I think the yield curve control should be coming to an end, and monetary policy should be coming to an end. But I think that is probably going to start to gather pace, probably more towards you know maybe March, April, and I say March, April, like March is a while away. March is probably about another week and a half away, um, but probably towards March, April, if I think any you know moves to the to to maybe the one three sevens i think are very good uh shorting opportunities and again as long as um we start to get the uh the uh the rumor that uh the yield curve control monetary policy is going to change for the japanese yen there's been a lot of uh forecasts talking about again going back to maybe the one two sixes one two eights and so uh the higher 
prices go uh, this exchange rate goes i think it's decent uh, shorting opportunity or if, again in the short term if you get any pullbacks into that demand zone i think that's a decent long opportunity uh dollar swiss dollar swiss um my bias would be to go long on this pair um if you're looking to buy the dollar one of the uh, um uh, pairs that I would buy if I'm buying the dollar against any pair one of them would be for example the Swiss franc um, you do have some demand right here and I think any pullbacks into uh, this lower demand zone the 91 area I think is going to be decent for a, uh, a buy especially uh, just below um, around the uh, 0 0.90 so that's a 90 cent area i think that's actually really nice technical uh buy for the us dollar over the swiss franc if you think the swiss franc um is is a bargain somewhere i would probably say maybe up to 94s 9450s before looking at getting um uh, short but personally um i would probably look for in the short term anyway any kind of long trades on that on that dollar swiss um, if you're looking to buy the dollar uh, same thing with the dollar cad i think the dollar cad i think is a, a decent buy if you're looking to buy the dollar so any kind of pullbacks into uh, this lower zone the one three two fifties i think is going to be seen as actually a decent bargain for the um the us dollar the us the federal reserve is still hiking rates and the canadian dollar actually are look, still looking to hold rates and that is as long as um, inflation isn't a problem in Canada, it doesn't become a problem again. Um, and so um, central banks typically don't, you know, once they start to hold or once they start to, you know, um, you know, start to cut rates, it, t it tends to be a cycle. So they tend to um, do, you know, their policy for a duration of time, meaning that if they're going to hike, they tend to hike, you know, two, three, four times. If they're holding, they tend to hold for, you know, a good maybe, you know, few quarters. And so um, I do think that this might actually be, you know, the, uh, the beginning of a potential uptrend for the dollar CAD. If you get a pullback down to these these areas here, actually, I think it's quite decent for a uh, potential buy. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar has come down to this uh, nice technical level, the 62s. The New Zealand um, economy is going through, um, uh, it had a bit of a natural disaster. I think it was um, uh, a cyclone, um, oh, what was it, cyclone, uh, it begins with G. The name begins with G. I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, um, which you know kind of devastated uh, some of the uh, some of the country. Um, the RBNZ, the um, New, uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, are making um, their monetary policy, and they're expected to hike by fifty basis points. But due to the natural disaster that recently happened, um, there was there is talk that they actually might um, hike by twenty five basis points so lower than expected if it comes out lower than expected if they you know hike by 25 basis points i think the new zealand dollar may start to sell off um especially as uh, you know the, the the us dollar is actually starting to hike being priced in a, a bit more hikes than what was uh, what was expected so um ultimately i think uh, this pair i'm not necessarily um trading this pair but if you are there are supply zones there if you want to be a buyer of the uh, the US dollar, so you're looking for a pullback into this zone here before looking at getting uh, short. Um, and if you're looking to get long, I would probably look for a fresher area of demand as this lever has been touched, what, once, twice, three, this is the, the third time. So anything, anything around that uh, 0 0.61 area, any fresh area of demand is a decent area to look for a buy trade technically. Uh, pound dollar and the pound um, we had some news regarding inflation so Britain's easing inflation puts end of BOE Bank of England rate hikes in sight so Bank of England may uh, make just one or two more increases so prices remain more sticky in the UK than in the US or Eurozone so um, because inflation came down um, more than expected the expectation is for the um, Bank of England to actually not hike as much because uh, as, as a rule of thumb, central banks typically don't want to mess with interest rates if they can because they understand the effect that interest rates can have on the economy. And so 
Um, yeah, you know, Britain has turned a corner on the worst bout of inflation since 1981, raising the prospect that the Bank of England may soon complete its unprecedented interest rate hiking cycle. Yeah, so investors are now betting the central bank uh, key rate peaks at 4.5% this summer. That suggests one or two more increases from the current 4.4%. Uh, as recently as October, a peak above 5% was being priced in. So obviously now they're pricing in potentially only 4.5%, which in the short term um, could mean the pound looking at, you know, coming down a bit more. Yes, there are hikes, but not as much hikes. So that has to be priced in. So I do think that any pullback into uh, a supply zone around here actually is a decent area to look for short trades. I am looking for prices to come up to here if it can and get sh um, get short around here for uh, for various reasons as well other than fundamentals. And so, um, yeah, for me, if I was looking to buy one or the other, if I'm buying the, 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 the dollar, uh, the pound would also be uh, a top contender for me to look to uh, um, to short uh, against, uh, against the dollar or buy the dollar against the, uh, the pound. Uh, Euro dollar, so the Euro dollar and Europe uh, is still quite hawkish, one of the most hawkish central banks at the moment when it comes to interest rates. Um, and this is because, um, again, high inflation. Uh, high inflation is pretty much everywhere. So ECB Schnabel sees risk markets underestimate inflation, right? So broadly, disinflation hasn't started. Um, inf uh, official says in interview and transmission of policy action may be weaker than in the past. And there was a couple of um, quotes in here. And it says, I think this is one of them, the markets are priced for perfection, she said. They assume inflation is going to come down very quickly towards 2% and it's going to stay there. While the economy will do just fine, that would be a very good outcome, but there are risks that inflation proves to be more persistent than is currently priced in by financial markets. And um, talks about traders bolstered hikes bolstered hike bets after Schnabel's remarks, fully pricing in a 3.75% peak in the deposit rate by the end of October for the first time. So um, yeah, there are uh, there's definitely um, more hawkishness going on. So a 50 basis point hike next month is necessary under virtually all plausible scenarios, she said, insisting that there is no inconsistency between our principle of data dependency and these uh, intentions because it's very unlikely that the incoming data is going to put this intention into question. And so um, it looks like, you know, wage growth is still picking up. Inflation is obviously still a problem and the ECB um, at the moment have room to hike. And so um, I think definitely in the short term, again, short term, maybe month or two, with um, the dollar being repriced in terms of, you know, they're hiking a bit more. I'm looking at potentially buying in and around this 106, 105 area. Um, I do think the dollar will have a bit of a, a uh, um, I guess, a, a ceiling to its appreciation. Um, and when you have two central banks actually hiking at the same time, uh, what you should have is more of an agreed uh, auction, right? Fair value auction. Some people know it as a as a range uh, or sideways moving market. It's actually known as a fair value auction. And I think the fair value auction should be really between this high and this low. So I think toward the 106, 105 areas, if we can get down there, I think that's going to be really uh, nice for a, uh, a potential buy for uh, the euro, I'd expect prices to start to auction from around there. Um, you do have a, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a supply zone right here. <coughs> but personally, I wouldn't necessarily look at that as a as a strong uh, supply zone. I would probably look at that more as um, this this area here would be the area I'd look for uh, any kind of. Uh, short trades although this is a definitely an option here intraday wise <clears throat> i would probably look for uh, uh trades more around the 109 if i was looking for any kind of short trades but my bias is still long on that euro so that's where i am australian dollar uh us dollar uh the australian dollar hasn't had some hasn't had great news um at the moment i think uh employment wise 
the data came out and it wasn't fantastic but i think the market is looking past that although obviously with the uh, with the us dollar um strengthening you could probably see prices come down a bit lower but I think overall the Australian dollar is a buy. And in fact, um, I'm gonna analyze the Aussie Swiss and a trade that I took, um, a profitable trade that I took uh, um, last week uh, to give you an idea um, uh, as to you know uh, the type of trades that we look for in a kind of, of, a, of a breakdown. But um, if I'm buying the Australian dollar, which I am, but I'm not doing it against the US dollar because you know um, I think overall uh, the, the dollar, again, they're, uh, their um, uh, interest rates are being repriced, which you know kind of strengthens the dollar a little bit. I think overall, if we do get a bigger pullback, China reopening, I did mention it again. Um, it was it here, right? So one of my concerns, I said, you know, a counter force to dollar appreciation will be China reopening uh, risk on, and if that continues, uh, China will be a benefit. Um, the Australia and the Australian economy will be a beneficiary of. Uh, China reopening and China economic strength, uh, commodity prices, um, you know, will, will rise due to Chinese demand and infrastructure and investment. And so I do think any pullbacks are decent buying opportunities, but just right now, I'm very cautious on the Australian dollar, uh, US dollar when it comes to buying in and around here, although uh, many will recognize that as a potential for a stop hunt in that area. But um, I'm going to, you know, sit out. I think my, my main plays on the Australian dollar are the uh, Australian dollar um, and the Canadian dollar, and I'll get to that. Sorry, uh, my I should say my, my main place to buy the Australian dollar would be against, for example, the Swiss franc and the Can and, and the Canadian dollar. So, um, yeah, we'll get into that a bit later. Gold, um, again, pulling back due to dollar strength, and so again, this demand zone didn't play out. Um, we do have an area which is okay but i think the better area to look for um gold if you're looking to buy gold um yeah, i think probably down towards the 1800s just a bit further down would be a, a decent technical level into that demand zone but again this is you know you're buying gold based off of potential dollar strength so if you think that the us dollar is going to um weaken right so if inflation actually is coming down um, and the Fed are less likely to, you know, hike, um, you know, three or four times rather than one or two times, then you want to be a buyer of gold. But if you're looking at, um, you know, buying the dollar um, because the Fed are looking to, you know, continue to hike interest rates, then gold may start to come down a little bit, right? And again, going back to the uh, the DXY, if, 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 you, if, you know, the dollar index starts to go up to the 105s, 106s, 107s, then you have to expect gold to, probably come down to somewhere around the 1800s to even like the 1760s, 1740s may actually be a decent area to look for a pullback to buy gold. Plus gold is due for a very deep pullback because we've just had this almost, you know, I wouldn't say parabolic one, but we haven't had a really a decent pullback on gold. So when you get moves like this, where you get kind of shallow pullbacks, um, what tends to happen is you get bigger uh, pullbacks eventually right so you get a move probably down to this area this 1740 i wouldn't be surprised if prices came down to that those 1740 areas uh before potentially looking at going um uh, higher as the dollar index you know if prices come up to the 107s 108s starts to go lower so there's the uh there's that correlation there and um yeah so my trade of uh of the week i'll break this down um, not in too much detail because it would be unfair on the uh, on the guys who are actually in the room for me to reveal everything that I do, of course. But just, um, uh, you know, the Australian dollar, Swiss franc took this trade and it was a profitable trade. And so, um, you know, really the fundamental bias is to buy the Australian dollar against the Swiss franc in a risk on environment, right? So first of all, we're in potential risk on or more risk on than, than, than risk off, which would mean, again, with China reopening, um, you know, there's zero COVID policy, I'm going to definitely favour the Australian dollar. The Swiss franc are definitely, um, you know, the, the central bank are hiking rates still as well. So it's not, you know, a, a, a perfect divergence. But just on the, on, on, from a risk on perspective, you know, the Australian dollar is really tipped to be 
um, one of the uh, buyers for 2023. And so all I'm looking for really is just pullbacks, you know, on a daily time frame back into this demand zone. Brilliant. Now, I have no idea whether prices are going to reverse here. Nobody does, right? But when prices pull back and if the market agrees, you know, if the market agrees that this, my entry is, is the absolute bottom, then brilliant, I'll make some money, right? Make a, make some, a decent amount. If it doesn't, then I'll just, and it pulls back even more and gives me an entry, then I'll get in right here, right? That's really how, you know, to trade or the idea behind trading fundamental analysis is just understanding where the bargains potentially are. And so when we look at uh, this trade, uh, prices had really kind of come down to uh, this, you know, this demand zone here. And so I'll go down to like a four hour and um, I entered into a few positions, managed to get um, uh, into uh, three positions. And so um, the blue lines right here, right, are where my uh, orders were, right, well, where my market order was at, and I'll zoom in a bit more. So it was a uh, 0.636, I had one at 0 0.635, uh, 355, and then I had another one at the absolute bottom, which was 0 0.6350. Uh, and I had a 15 pip stop, which is about here from that absolute low. So I had three orders. Now you can see that all orders got filled right the, the top one the middle one and the bottom one all got filled with price and um the bottom order yeah ended up um going for at least a three to one but i took that off at actually a two to one which was somewhere around here and also as well um what i uh what i do is my orders are uh i get heavier as prices go down so meaning that the top order right You've got three orders and if you're looking to be a buyer then the top order is 0 0.1 percent yeah the, the second order is 0 0.2 percent and the third order is 0 0.3 percent yeah and so with that yeah if i get filled in all three my total risk is going to be 0 0.6 percent of that, so not every trade is going to be zero point six percent. It depends on, um, you know, the uh, uh, what what price actually does. But if I'm fortunate enough to get in, in all three, then my maximum risk on this trade is going to be zero point six, and I'll let the market, you know, dictate um, dictate that, right? And that's my maximum loss as well. Now on this trade, yeah, I managed to get in on all three positions, and with a two to one on my uh, zero point three position. It's lower position at the uh, 0 0.635, I managed to do a two to one, so now my reward is 0 0.6, yeah. So now I've swing trading, I'm actually swing trading these two positions, 0.3% on these two positions, and even if I lose these two positions, yeah, the maximum I'm losing is 0 0.3, which means that in fact I cannot lose on this because ultimately my profit now I've banked is, um, you know, at the worst is 0.3% yeah, on this one trade. Um, but the maximum amount I can make is, um, you know, I mean, they're unlimited really, but my ultimate goal um, is for, you know, prices to actually reach uh, to the highs of this uh, of this auction here. So um, I have a lot of upside potential on this if I'm right about this fundamentally against the Swiss franc. Um, but if I'm not right about this um, anymore and the other two you know, prices come down, then this is still a profitable trade ultimately. So um, at the moment, this is where I'm swing trading and uh, that's really kind of a breakdown of the trade. And so, um, so yeah, that's really uh, one of the trades I'm in uh, this week. Uh, there was a couple of others actually that I am in. I'm in on the uh, CAD yen um, and a couple of others. And so uh, let's see how that goes. But I thought that this would be a decent breakdown um, of uh, of this trade and really how you know I approach. Um, uh, the markets and how I uh, uh, manage my risk and my trade so you can get a bit of an insight as to um, you know how we actually trade at trading 180 anyways guys um, that is it for this week I hope you have a great trading week 
and um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Stay blessed and uh, uh, cheers and thanks for watching. The, the really the short answer. Now, what we ended up going on to is actually a, a, a decent concept, which was what makes the the pound or any currency. Can you judge a currency's value based off of historical or technical levels? Now, I would believe that the answer is. Yes and no. Yes, in so far as it's a reference point. Yeah. So let's say, you know, this, and I'll go to, actually, I'll go to a live chart, make it a lot easier. Right. Let's go to a live chart. Uh, it's a good, technicals are a good reference. So if we zoom out to the weekly, right, let's zoom out to the weekly. Get rid of everything on the price chart. Now, if you've gone through the course, you will know that what I say is, is that at some point, this is obviously deemed a bargain area for the pounds, right? This was a bargain area. For the, for the pounds. Back in 2020, during the, during the pandemic. Yeah, brilliant, excellent. Now, as a reference point, the question then becomes, is that a bargain now? Yeah. Now, price, just looking solely at price, it would suggest that it is a potential. Of course, none of us know, but we don't, well, I don't base my analysis on what bargain is. A bargain is based off of price because price is not a reflection of value. Yeah. I mean, it can be, but typically you need to know you know, how, uh, what a currency or any asset, how it derives its value. And it's not through really looking at price. I understand, 100% understand that it was a bargain here, so it could be a bargain there. But on a on deeper reflection, what hap what what drove prices higher here for the pound, yeah, may not be the same thing that drives prices higher here for the pound, yeah? And so let's say prices come all the way down, have come all the way down here. Now, let's say, for example, I don't know, Rishi Sunak was the person that ended up getting prime minister and his policies would have been totally opposite, you know, from Liz Truss's, obviously, because um, he would have ran on, on, on different policies. And let's say, for example, the market thought that his policies were terrible. Yeah. For the pound. Because fundamentally, you know, we're looking at, you know, the fundamentals, right? That's what we're looking for is to derive value, not price. So although we can look to the left and see that it was a bargain two years ago, A, it's not the the, the same thing. The reasons for the pound going higher is not going to be the same as, 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 as today. And so, and B, fundamentally, we need to know what's going on now, which basically, un, you know, makes us understand why price should go lower or beyond that point or actually, if the pound is actually a bargain down here, based off of what we understand about fundamentals. Yeah. So just because something is seen as, for example, the dollar might be seen as expensive, does that mean that the pound is cheap? Does that mean that the pound is cheap? That's the question to you guys. It's not a rhetoric question. <laughs> just, just, just to get, just to get, you know, your feedback. No, it, exactly, it doesn't. Something can stay expensive forever, and also as well, who's to say that this is expensive? Exactly, it's two different stories. That's exactly it. First of all, now, had this, let's say, for example, this wasn't a weekly chart, and let's say, for example, this nice little price action had happened, let's say, for example, one month ago. Yeah. Let's say it happened one month ago. Now, you, it's, it's easier to determine whether anything has changed fundamentally when prices come up to or down to this point. So let's say, for example, the, the, the Bank of England, let's just go into fantasy land, and the Bank of England now have decided that they want to, 
you know, everything is lovely with the economy, right? GDP is growing. Everything is, 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 is wonderful, right? They're growing, going into the, you know, expansion phase of the economic cycle and inflation is trending away. And do you know what I mean? It's everything is brilliant. And then you start to see this happen. Yeah. Prices are going, you know, against the pound. Yeah. But the, situ the scenario that caused price to go higher here has not changed. Yeah. So GDP is good. Everything is good. Central bank is hiking into strength. All of that. Is, does this now look like a bargain or does it not today, right? A month ago, and nothing has changed, by the way. Nothing has changed here, yeah? We're still, scenario fundamentals are still the same. Exactly. It does look like a bargain now, right? <laughs> yes, in fantasy land, exactly, right? <laughs> so, but, the, and, and this is the point. This is exactly the point. Whatever drove prices here and cause traders to buy yeah price is not value and value is not always reflected in price if you can understand that the, the banks want to buy at bargain prices and you're not looking at this as and scratching your head and going oh well why 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 rather than just looking at it like prices are coming down this is absolutely a fantastic buying opportunity because nothing has changed fundamentally from like a month ago then this is a bargain. Yeah. So, so great, you know, um, I'm thankful for, uh, for, for Edwin for, um, for highlighting this and going through the conversation. And um, I think it's a really important point. It's a very, very important point that, you know, we should, uh, we should make. Yes. Price, like I said, typically, we know that to be a bargain or an expensive area. But it doesn't mean that this is going to be a bargain based off of just typically what price has done there. We need to know the fundamentals and what risk sentiment is and what the central bank is doing, etc. That's what is the most important. So more things to, 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 to go over. We've got loads of things to go over. Uh, and something is very important as well, which is uh, where are we now? Bank of Japan intervention language. That is, um, there was an article today which came out, which I thought was, again, uh, fantastic. Another great article. Where